Hello and welcome to another video looking at the the wacky world of uh, flat earth belief. Now in this video I'm going to be focusing again on the question of the equinox. Um, now on an equinox, and this you can check this out um, anywhere online it will tell you about equinoxes or anywhere you can read about them. On an equinox the sun rises due east and sets due west pretty much everywhere on earth apart from the poles or in the vicinity of the north or south pole and also almost everywhere on earth, on earth you get 12 hours of sunlight on an equinox so that means in the whole world the sun sets sorry rises due east sets due west and you get 12 hours of sunlight now, I'd like to consider this in the light of the flat earth model because now here we've got what's supposed to be the flat earth model. This is a standard model that most of them kind of uh, go on about, which is that you've got the, the flat earth with the wall of ice around here, the north pole kind of in the middle, and this line here is meant to represent the uh, equator. Now the equator is the line that the sun follows on the equinox. So on a flat earth supposedly the sun moves in a giant circle around the North Pole um, a few thousand miles above the flat earth like this. So what I'm going to do is consider the feasibility of this idea. Now let's consider a point in the in the northern hemisphere here. See you're somewhere about here. So this is sort of somewhere between um, so roughly halfway between the equator and the North Pole. So you could be somewhere in Europe. Um, now, one of the things about this flat earth model is, well, the first thing you've got to think about, how do you define things like north, south, east, west? Well, presumably north is a direction that's always pointing towards the, the centre of the disk, the North Pole. South is the direction you're going to be pointing in the opposite direction and presumably east and west are the lines that are at right angles to this so they're going to be like this east and west so so for someone in the northern hemisphere on the flat earth this um, gives them the this gives you their, your their four main directions north south east west now if it's an equinox, they should see the sun rising due east and setting due west. So the sun should rise and set somewhere on this line. So the points where the east-west line intersects with the, the path of the sun, i.e. The, um, the equator, this should be the points where they start to see the sun and where they stop seeing the sun. Now, If, well, there's, there's a lot of problems with this. I mean, for a start, if the sun was here and someone was here, um, it wouldn't be as low as the horizon. I mean, that's one issue, but, you know, we won't go into that too much. But the main issue with this one is, though, that the sun would go from here to here, would only be visible for this part of its circle, um, cycle around the whole Earth, which is not 12 hours. It's not half of that circle. So for someone in the Northern Hemisphere, they might be able to see the sun rise east and, and set west, but it couldn't be um, for 12 hours. Now another problem with this is, um, the, 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 the range of visibility of the sun for this person is the distance from there to here and the distance from here to here. Now what about if someone's further south than them? What if someone's here? If they're going to see the, the sun rising in the east and setting in the west, then their line of visibility for the sun that interacts with the, where it, sorry, their, their east-west line will um, intersect with the sun's path here and here. So apparently on this model, if everyone's going to see the sun rising due east, then depending on how far north you are, 
you see the sun further away, but when you're further south, apparently the sun, you see it closer. You don't see it until it gets closer. Now, exactly what kind of properties the sun could have that could make that possible, I can't even imagine. I mean, basically, it just doesn't make any sense, let's be honest. It doesn't make any sense at all. So maybe there could be somewhere in the Northern Hemisphere where you could see the sun rise in the east and set in the west, but maybe only in one location, and you certainly wouldn't see it for 12 hours. So that doesn't work. Now let's consider someone in the Southern Hemisphere. It gets worse. So there's the line from the North Pole down to here. So this is their North-South line, say they're there. And this is their east-west line. Well, you can see that their east-west line does not intersect with the path of the sun. So, in the, in the southern hemisphere, it, just, it would just be impossible to see the sun rising in the east and setting in the west. Never mind see it for 12 hours doing that, or, you know, following a path from east to west for 12 hours. So, I mean, we, we have to be honest and say that this model is just, it's not just a little bit wrong, it's, it's catastrophically wrong, it's a joke. I mean, it just doesn't even begin to account for even the simplest things that we know about the world. Exactly why it's taken seriously by people, you know, one, you can only wonder. I, I don't understand it. Um, now, let's think about the situation from the perspective of a spherical Earth. Now, suppose this circle now represents the Earth as a sphere. Well, now let's suppose this line's equator going across here. So this, this is the Arctic and this is the Antarctic down here. Now on an equinox, what's special about an equinox is that the sun is directly overhead above the equator. Now you remember, as I showed, um, the sun is very far away, so all its rays are basically parallel, coming in like this. Which means that, you know, this is completely out of proportion, but say if you're someone standing here, it looks like, to them, it looks like the sun is uh, coming in at an angle like this. Whereas someone standing on the equator at midday, that is, so this is supposed to be the person standing on the equator at midday, the sun's directly overhead. Now, because the sun's because because the Earth's a sphere and it's been illuminated by <coughs> the sun, which is in the distance, basically what it means is the sun lights up half the Earth. So this half's in darkness. So you can imagine for anybody on this line here, now this is supposed to be a curve like this, because this is supposed to be a sphere, so this is supposed to come out like this. So anyone that's on this line here, the sun is going to be setting, sorry, rising in the east and setting in the west. So you can imagine they're sort of turning around like this. So they're in darkness, they're in darkness, then they get to a point here, and now they start to see the sun. And they go all the way around, and then they come all the way back, and it starts to get dark. So, the, the circle that they follow around the Earth, no matter where you are, it takes them 12 hours to get from leaving the darkness, going into daylight for 12 hours and coming back to when it's dark again. And that's why, on an equinox, um, the sun set, rises in the east and sets in the west everywhere on Earth, and that's why you get 12 hours of sunlight everywhere on Earth. Now, there are many facts that make a flat Earth impossible, say the circumpolar stars, the fact that it's light for 24, you can see the sun for 24 hours, 
a day in the summer in Antarctica, all of these things. But flat earthers have got an remarkable ability for wriggling out of facts or facing up to reality. But the problem with this is you can't actually wriggle out of this one. Because this is testable. Um, I mean, for the next equinox is on the 23rd of September. Now, anybody anywhere in the world can get up at about 6 o'clock in the morning, notice the direction that the sun's rising in, and then at 6 o'clock at night, notice the direction the sun's setting in. And no matter where you are in the world, it'll rise in the east and set in the west, and it'll rise about 6 o'clock in the morning, it'll rise, set about 6 o'clock at night. Um, give or take an hour, depends on your local time zone, some places it might be 7 or something like that, but anyway, you'll get 12 hours of sunlight. Now, that's just not possible on this flat earth model, it's just not possible. In the southern hemisphere, there's no way that you could see the sun rise in the east and set in the west. In the northern hemisphere, you could possibly see it at one location, but it wouldn't last for 12 hours. And it, I don't see how you could possibly see it at all locations in the northern hemisphere. You certainly couldn't see it at the equator. I mean, it's just... It, it's just... It's absurd, really. That, that's the only word I can use to describe this. It's absurd. It's absurd that in the year 2015, People are talking about this and actually saying that this model is a feasible model of the Earth when it's a complete joke. Okay, this, this explains the equinox perfectly. The spherical Earth explains the equinox. So, if you want to test whether the Earth is a sphere or if it's flat, just go out on the next equinox. Go out on the next equinox. Maybe ask some people you know around the world to do the same thing and tell you where the sun rose and where it set on their locations. Preferably some people scattered north to south. You know, we'd need some people in the southern hemisphere to check it for you. Some people in northern hemispheres. You know, as long as there's a distribution of a few people around the world. If they all say that the sun rose in the east, set in the west, and they had 12 hours of sunlight, then the Earth's not flat. It's just impossible.